What's up guys? I'm uh, doing this video to show how to cut and um, install a new chain when you got to cut links off. Normally when you buy them they come in like 100, 110, um, 120 link chains and then you got to cut them down to what fits your bike. For me I bought a 110 link um, 530 chain. It's a uh, just a heavy duty chain, no O rings, no X rings, because uh, it's going on an old Honda 450. So this came as 110. I got to cut it down to 92. I counted the links on the previous chain, which I have here. It's all pretty grimy. It's got rust forming between the links, and uh, I don't know how long it's been on the bike, so just figured I'd go and change it. It's probably stretched some. Um, surprisingly the sprockets are good on the bike so I don't have to change those just yet but I counted the links on these and the trick you know if, if you already got the if you've got the chain the trick I do is I count only the outer outside links count them all down don't don't count the uh, little inside links that end it because that's where your master links are going to go on but count them all down you'll get a number probably you know in the 40s or 50s multiply that by 2 and then add 1 to for this extra master link and that'll give you the length you need so I counted down on this and I got 45 for the outside links I added 1 for that master link 46 multiply that by 2 you get 92 so then on the new chain I would just count the outside links again till I got to 45 and then I'd cut after that so I'd have two inside pieces left. Normally one, both ends already have the inside links on so then you're putting down the master link but you just count it all the same. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate how to cut this with this RK Excel chain tool pack I borrowed from my buddy because uh, I was only doing this once right now so I didn't want to uh, spend the money on a chain tool. I know Harbor Freight sells one for like 13 bucks but I don't think it has all the attachments. Uh, I got close ups on all the little bits on, on the blog which I'll link at the bottom of the video. But use this is pretty simple even though the directions seem like they're just like straight up like they were Chinese and they just plugged them into a Google Translate and typed them up. They're not the best directions I've seen. So, I'll just show you real quick how to do it. It's pretty straightforward. I'm not going to cut my chain down to size just for the video, but in case I mess up while trying to explain it, but I'll just cut off a link for you guys to see. Take the chain tool like this. You can set this out bring it in a little bit if you want, doesn't matter, but there's this bevel piece, it's got, you know, it's got two diameters, that, the inside, the, the smaller diameter fits into the back of this chain tool, so it looks like that, and then this, this whole thing will fit into the chain like so, hold on, let me get lined up. You set the chain with the rivet that you want to knock out. So here, if you can see it, there's a rivet right here. I've already knocked out the front one just because I was trying out the tool. But if I'm going to knock out this rivet, I'll line it up and set the bump inside. There's a hole since this is see-through. Set the rivet in like that. and then just drop down this outside piece my dog's barking in the background just set it down so it's snug it's gonna just hold it in place then I think for this, let me check the directions, it's a 17 millimeter nut on the top so you just want to tighten that down just so it stays in place not too tight, you don't want to strip it or anything. Now, also in your kit you have this jobber, you just gotta assemble it really quick. 
this is what's going to punch our root, drops down into the tool like so, and then you're just going to thread this down till you feel it stop, and that's when it's going to be touching the top of the pin. Make sure it's all lined up by looking at it, just in case the bottom, you know, it kind of goes out of the uh, slant or anything, because this pin is going to punch that pin right through, you know, the hollow part down here. Now, take a 14 millimeter deep socket because this has got a considerable length. I, I I was trying it with a you know regular size 14 millimeter like this, but it you know it's only dropping down a little bit. So I just want to make sure I didn't strip it or anything. I don't know how hard this is. So take this. Make sure you're setting it tight and then just start slowly turning it. You'll feel some resistance. Right now it's starting to give me some resistance and that's pushing through the first set of links. My chain is going all over the place. And since I'm lefty and trying to do this the other way it's kind of hard. If you feel a lot of resistance you're probably doing something wrong, but a little resistance, the manual says, is actually, okay, here we go. Still lined up. And then you'll feel it loosen really quick, because right now it's traveling, the pin is, is traveling between the two size and then it'll get hard again. And once that back end that was flared starts going through the opposite side right before you're done, it'll get a little bit tight again. Definitely use a socket for this. If you use just a regular crescent wrench, it'll be here for a while. I'm pretty sure you can probably mount this whole thing into a vise too, that way you don't have to hold both ends. So, there you saw it pop out. Here it is. You can see that the edge, you know, is, is, is flared, pinned to keep it in place. And then, just back this out a little bit. Back the pin out. This might be able to do, undo it by hand. No. You know, back this whole thing all the way out. There, the chain fell out. Put that away so you don't knock it or bend it or bend it. I'm sure, you're pretty pretty much screwed. So, so you'll need a new pin. You can just turn this out if you need to. You saw the chain popped out. Rivet's done. It's gone. That's how it fit. Now, I'm going to cut the rest of my chain and then come back to install the new master link and rivet it. Alright, so here we go. Got the chain on the bike, you know, string it through the sprocket, through the front sprocket, line it up. It's easier if you're working on this on a CB old Honda, um, make sure there's wheels all the way far, as far forward as you can get it. That way, as the chain stretches, you can increase the tension by backing it off. Um, but here, you notice that this front plate's missing. I've slipped the, um, you know, the two... Uh, connector pin through the back. It's sometimes a bitch to get on, especially if you're, you know, like nice and tight to begin with. But you can see that the plate's not there. You have the pins coming out the front. Now, what we're going to use in the tool is one of these plates. Um, there are two different thicknesses for the, this channel that's in it. Uh, you just got to see which one works the best for you. Uh, I think for O ring chains, it's going to use this deeper channel. But since this is a standard non-O-ring chain, 
it's going to use the thinner channel. What what I did was I just checked what the other rivets look like and make sure that there's not just too much of a gap in there. Um, now this piece mounts into the tool where that pin used to be. This will mount in. Oh, let me get it. try to do this one-handed. That mounts in just like that. And now you won't need the pin again, but you're gonna set this up so that it's just gonna clamp onto it. Hold on, I got the old tool on there on this side still. You just want this the back side to be flat. This sits in there, and then you're gonna seat that link in here. Hook it around the back like that, and then you're gonna crank down on the 17 millimeter bolt and press fit that plate onto the, the pins because right now it's not gonna really it might go on a little bit but it's not really gonna set there so let me do that real quick so there I got the chain tool on there it's a bitch to do this I'm gonna get it in focus um, because that that can that master link uh, it doesn't sit anywhere in any channels here so you kind of have to hold it against the pins and then get this around there and and tighten it up while making sure if you can see from the sides oh, sorry. not focusing but you there's a channel in there and you want to make sure that these holes are in that channel um, and you got to make sure that you have the right uh, bit on here because that's what makes sure that you don't over punch it or anything that you get the proper depth for the pin to come out. If, if you use a deeper one, you might be tempted to keep going, but this acts as a stop. Um, so once you get it down, I found what ended up working for me when doing this is to kind of hold the, hold the tool um, and you, you kind of pinch the pin against that block, push it forward against that connecting pin without you know popping it out, and then tighten this into it while also pulling back on that. So it's, you know, whatever works for you, but that one worked for me. And the, once I figured it out, it clicked and it kind of went in really quick. So now to press that plate on, I would just tighten this down with that 17. Motherfucker. See what happens? Let me go do that again. See, this is why we can't have nice things. All right, I got it back on. Hopefully it doesn't fall off this time, but I'm going to tighten this down, get it plated back up, and then show it to you. It's really quick. That's it half on. I just started to do it, made sure I was even, wasn't doing it at a tilt. Alright, so I got the pin on, or rather the, the front link on right there. You can see it's right out there. Check it really quick to make sure you didn't like over stamp it. That you still have, you know, movement in that area. You don't want it to like bind up when it's going in there and potentially pop it off. So now we just gotta rivet or flare these ends to keep it on like that. If you look at any of the other ones on your on your chain, you'll see that they're all kind of mashed up. That they're just ballooned a little bit, so you know the metal's pushed out to hold it, hold this plate back. It just needs to be a little bit. You don't want to do it too much. For that, we're using these tool, the tools, if I didn't drop them, this end goes into, on the, on the tool, that end, where'd it go, right. this end will go into the back, that side, right there, this end goes in, right there, makes a hole in there and then this end with the point gets seated in to that end and then this gets driven into the pin the other side with the hole kind of lines it up you know on the back side on that make sure it's pushing against it and then it's just going to punch in and flare it so here it is on the tool it's 
kind of dark, so you might not be able to see it, but the uh, top of the pin, this pin is right on that rivet, and then the whole, it just seats in there. That way you know you're all lined up, and then you're just going to drive this in using um, the 17 millimeter socket. You just tighten it on the bolt, and it should punch it. The manual says just make sure you don't flare. You don't flare it out. Um, they don't show on here, but I found online, if you look at this, it actually gives you an example of what a, uh, a pin that's over, over pressed, like punched, looks like. And, you know, it looks like a bullet hole, so you just want to, just needs a little bit and it'll stay on. Alright, done flaring it. Right there. I think I got oil on the lens, but... That's why it's all foggy, but uh, you can just tell that there's a pock mark. Actually, you can't even tell with this. Um, but yeah, just did it. Just go till you feel it. You know, give it some some good resistance. Don't go too far. You'll mess it up. So once it you know really starts fighting back, then stop. You're good. All right. Hope this video helped. Good luck. Safe riding.